Hey guys, welcome back to my studio. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC. Let's take a closer look at the Bug 6. It just came in this week. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that little flight test that I just did. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I did two camera setups on this one. I did a little credit card gimbal. This is for my RunCam 2 Action Cam. You can get these on RunCam.com or I'll try to put a link down below for you guys if you're looking to put one of these on there. Uh, this one actually works pretty well with this credit card gimbal dampening system I have right here. I'll show you how that's made in just a little bit and then I also put an all-in-one camera on here it looks like it did take a, a couple hits there uh, while I was flying this quite a heavy quad over top of this antenna but I have uh, a really nice little setup here for not a lot of money and if you're looking to do some kind of FPV trainer you can do it just like this or you can buy the extra FPV camera that comes uh, that fits right in this slot right here and then you'll have a tiltable camera up front that you can move around uh, and you'll have a built-in DVR so there's a version of this one I have the standard version so it doesn't have all the camera and everything up in here but not hard to add one if you want to now what's interesting about this quad is uh, some of the specs on here are are fairly are fairly good for a trainer um, all the parts on here are not carbon they're all plastic so that makes it cheaper to repair and uh, cheaper to get parts extra props uh, are very very cheap for this racer quad uh, if you want to call it a racer uh, I would call it more of a trainer quad myself um, it's labeled a racer but uh, that will be up to you and your flying style so um, this is not going to be a competition racer by the way this is in no way something you're going to take out and fly a multi GP race with uh, or a local race league this is purely for just getting into FPV um, and this particular version the standard version if you want to just learn how to fly a quadcopter this thing is actually pretty tough I crashed it around the field I hit trees with it I chopped branches as you can see uh, this prop has some scarring on it right here some notches and I didn't even break a prop um, and I did a pretty good crash with it so it held up which is nice but this one's all ready to go if you want to add an FPV camera system on that um, and the motors are really interesting on this I wanted to show you guys this I'm just gonna bring the camera down a little bit closer for you and bring this in a little closer so you can see it now look at this really closely here let's go ahead and get to focus this is not metal right here. This bell right here over top of this motor is actually a hard industrial plastic. Now that might lighten up this motor a little bit and make it spin a little more efficiently. Uh, or it could, if it's not perfectly balanced, cause vibration, extra vibration on the aircraft. Um, but it looks like it's machined and molded really, really nice. So I don't think it's going to cause any vibration problems. Uh, also, up here on the very top, you notice this is different than what you've traditionally seen on racer quads. You have sort of a lock nut, uh, self-tightening style nuts that have the rubber inside them. This one actually has a thumb screw nut. And this is nice for new guys because you don't have to have any tools at the field. You don't have to bring an extra tool kit. If you break a prop, you can just spin it off just like that. Now, if you had to put a new one on, they are labeled as well. It has A on this prop right here, and it shows you which direction it turns. It's turning to the right right here. And it has a little rubber grommet in here as well for this to tighten down to so you get a better connection, a more snug connection for this nut on top of the prop. A little less vibes as well. Now these motors are 1800s, uh, 1806s to be exact, and they are 1800 kV, so um, not a super high kV on that, but it, this is meant to be a slow and stable flyer. It does have high and low rates on it, which let this one fly pretty fast, if you saw in my flight test a little bit uh, earlier in this video. What's interesting about this quad too, guys, is the fact that when you do add that little camera in here, if you want to add that, it's running on 5.8. So you can actually use Fat Shark style goggles because these are running 5.8 right here on this antenna. So this is this is kind of nice. You can use standardized goggles on here, or you can get a little monitor that comes with it, or you can actually get the MJX goggles that the monitor slides down into. Uh, but once you get the FPV camera on here, you'll be able to record your videos straight from your FPV camera. I believe it was 720p on that recording, uh, straight to a DVR, and you have a little smart card in there. Uh, it could be a, a 1080p recording on there too. I'm not, I can't quite remember. But um, 
it's going to be really nice for your flights. Now let's go ahead and talk about this battery that comes with it, with the Bug 6. And this is a 2S battery, so traditionally race quads use 3 and 4S. Uh, it does have a hard case around it, which is nice for the new guys, so it will be more durable than a typical LiPo uh, if you do crash it. Now also, this is 7.4 volt, 1300 milliamp, and 1300 milliamp traditionally is kind of uh, the standard milliamp hour range. Uh, so it does also have an XT30 on here, which is really, really important. You get a maximum voltage range from this battery to the power system using these. Uh, a lot better than JST for uh, a larger motors like 1806s. And this little guy does have LEDs front and rear. You have red in the rear and these white ones on the front right next to where the FPV slot is. You just take these two screws out right here, pop this guard off, and then you can put your camera up in there. It's also tiltable, by the way, if you want to upgrade to that. Now, how did I do my camera setup here? I didn't have this one, so what I did was I just rigged up an all-in-one camera up here on the top with a little tiny Whoop HV battery, and I ran it straight from that battery, a uh, separate battery from the quadcopter and just below that I have my run cam 2 and that's on my fancy super fancy credit card gimbal um, very very cheap and simple to build these I just have this one on there reversed and then you can flip the image on the video see normally they would be hanging like this on the bottom of a quad but for this one I wanted it riding on top so I just flipped it upside down these are super simple to build all you have to do is take a credit card cut it in half with a pair of scissors put four holes in each corner um, of the credit card half. And what you do is you take this zip tie, a single eight inch zip tie, and you run it around through the holes up and under, just like I have here. In case you decide to build your own, there it is. Pretty simple, uh, up and down. And then between the credit card and the run cam too, I have a piece of sticky tape, double-sided sticky tape, like 3M VHB works really awesome. Uh, also here in between the quadcopter and the bottom part, I have two pieces of industrial Velcro. That just adds a little more dampening, um, soft mount between the quadcopter and the gimbal itself. And then I just have one single large zip tie running around the whole quad right here. And there's actually a hole right here where you can get the zip tie through. So that's kind of cool, but you can't remove your top when this is on. Uh, if this is off, this top right here actually pops on and off. So it'd be really easy to install that FPV camera inside here. Uh, FPV camera slash DVR system all in one. So the transmitter that comes along with it, you know, it's pretty simple. It's very basic. Um, like I said, it is a beginner quadcopter, so it's not going to be a super awesome, uh, something like a FR Sky or a Spectrum transmitter, but it'll get the job done. And you can bind this with other MJX quadcopters if you want to. Pretty simple to bind it up. All you have to do is turn on the quadcopter, plug in the battery, and then hold down this red button right here. As you're holding it down, go ahead and turn on the transmitter and it will automatically link up with the quadcopter. So pretty simple process to bind up any quad to this. You have throttle on the left right here. Your yaw axis is right here. You have roll left and right here and pitch forward and back. You also have trim buttons on here, but generally with quadcopters, if you're new, leave those alone. You don't really to need to move those. If it's drifting left or right, just correct it with the stick uh, because it might be reacting to environmental factors like wind. Um, so pretty important that you leave those trims all centered out so the flight controller can do its job, the uh, accelerometer up inside there. So one drawback about this one, like I said, it doesn't have clean flight or beta flight on it. So it does have full time stabilization. So that's not gonna let you fly something like Acro where there's no stabilization and it takes total pilot skill to maintain uh, a level status of the aircraft and keep it in the air. Now stabilization, some people say yes, it's kind of cheating, but uh, you do have high and low mode here and high rate will let you have more tilt on the quad and it'll fly faster. The low rate will fly a little smoother if you're trying to shoot nice video. But this quad's all about cruising. Um, 
in the low mode and high mode is going to be a little more fun. You probably saw when I was flying around through the playground equipment. And yes, I did hit the playground equipment with this quad um, once and uh, I didn't break a single thing on here. So it does pass the durability test. Now over here on the right hand side, we also have an automatic flip button. It looks like almost like a little recycle icon right here. And then we have a camera button. If you had the DVR system in here, long press that, it starts the video, short press, and it takes a photo. Now, some of the accessories that come along with it, they're pretty decent. This is a little 2S and 3S charger. It will charge 2S right here and 3S on this side. Uh, just simply plugs into the USB port back here and plugs into your USB port of choice, either your computer or into the wall. Pretty simple charger, and that charges up in about 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes per battery. Um, you also have a screwdriver here for maintenance or working on your quad, which is you know, it's kind of nice they include that. And then you also have a set of extra props here. This is awesome. I always like an extra set of props. Really nice. And these are all labeled as well. And they have that little divot in the very top. And the little grommet goes right inside that. You also have an instruction manual that's fully English from front to back, which is really, really nice. And they have all the parts, schematics, and numbers back here if you need to uh, order anything else or look something up on the GearBest website. It's the battery number and uh, all that good stuff in there. And you also have some information on the VR goggles, uh, which they call VR goggles. They're really FPV goggles. And you have your 5.8 receiver system for uh, your video display if you want to have FPV you have to have the video display too because these goggles don't actually have the monitor inside them you have to buy that as well and this is the camera this is that C5830 right here that has the built-in DVR and you also get a quick guide with this one quick start guide this is nice because everything is also in English in here and it's really well written uh, it doesn't seem like Google translation so um, I got to give it to MJX RC they do a great job on their instruction manuals uh, coming out of China, that's a really good thing for you guys, uh, English speaking. Now we also have stickers in here, which is cool. Everybody likes stickers. You can take these off and put them on your quad or your transmitter or maybe your uh, battery box. That's kind of nice they have those. So that's about it for this review, guys. I, I think this is a pretty cool quad. Um, that's what's so great about my channel is that I do have a lot of experience and I've flown quads for years. Um, I built them myself. I do racer quads. I do aerial photography quads. I've built just about every type of quad there is out there, uh, including octocopters and hexacopters in the early days of this whole crazy movement. But if you're just getting into this, I have to honestly give you my honest and educated opinion that this is a decent trainer and it's, it's going to work for you. Uh, it is definitely durable. It's tough. It has a lot of room for extra mods on it. You have plenty of room up here on this canopy to add an action camera. And for the uh, $100 point, if you wanted to get into this, I think it, the, the standard version without the camera and all that stuff is like $96. So not a bad deal. And you get a lot of stuff with it. Um, also, I got to give a, a shout out to MJX RC. They're they're doing an awesome job and they have some other stuff coming out this summer. So it's going to be a fun summer for uh, MJX RC and uh, stay posted and stay tuned to what MJX RC does next because I think it's going to be pretty cool. I like their stuff. So thanks again for watching this review, you guys. I'm Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one.